Well, today we're here to look at a very interesting car. This is uh, my 1963 Volkswagen Beetle. This is a car that was engineered by Dr. Ferdinand Porsche. Uh, Porsche used to be the chief engineer of DMG, Daimler and Vapex uh, company, until they merged with uh, Carl Best and they became known as Mercedes Benz. Well, in 1928, uh, Porsche decided that he resigned from Mercedes Benz and uh, created a car that was more affordable more fuel efficient, uh, all around bulletproof, and that would put Germany back on wheels, basically. Uh, it was a car that any working man could afford. Uh, when these came out, I think they were about $2,000, where Mercedes Benz is way over that price. Um, of course, the quality isn't as good as Mercedes Benz, but you still get that German feel, that German engineering. Uh, these cars are basically bulletproof. To this day, Volkswagen's uh, Volkswagen Beetle has become the longest running line continuously of any automotive car in the world. Uh, they sold about 21 million of these cars. Um, the only other car that comes close to that is Ford's Model T, which sold about 16 million. Uh, in terms of lineage, the only other car that actually evolved and kept going was probably Porsche's 911. Uh, which branched off of the Porsche Speedster, which branched off of this car, the Volkswagen Beetle. So that heritage just goes all the way back throughout that time. Well, anyway, when Porsche uh, decided that he was going to build a car like this, uh, Adolf Hitler, you know, he kind of caught word of that and uh, claimed the idea for his own. So Adolf never even had a freaking driver's license. So don't. Don't even claim that this is his car because this is all Porsche design almost. This particular car is still a Type 1. Uh, they didn't come out with the Super Beetles until after um, 1968 and on, and that's when evolutionary changes for the worst started coming into play. Uh, so if you get a classic Beetle, or if you're getting into classic cars, this is the way to do it. Uh, you really don't have to break the bank, and there's a bunch of them out there. Like I said, they sold 21 million. Uh, this car, in particular, I bought when I was 17. That's when I really caught that car bug, I guess you'd say. And this became my first car, and it's a driver. So everything on this car isn't perfect, but that's the way I like it. Well, let's open the hood up and see what she's got under her hood. All right, so. <clears throat> What you got under here is you got your gas tank, you got your fuse box and your fuses right here. Your speedo, your speaker, this is the radio, this is the dash compartment here. All your fluids. Uh, there's supposed to be a spare tire here, I'm still looking for an extra one. Uh, you got an interesting feature, you got this, uh, this really old jack for the car. And it's pretty basic under here. They kept this uh, gas tank in the front so that uh, when you crash, you not only put your face into the metal and crash, this gas will fly up and extinguish you. Well, like I said, there's not much space in here, so uh, this really wasn't meant to be like a grand touring car. This was meant to be like a fun car that you go to the beach, get some lady friends, grab your other friends, get a beach ball, stick it in the front. And have some fun in the sun. A vintage Volkswagen weekend. Anyways, let's turn this car around and we can uh, take a look at the back of the car. And so now that we're at the back of the car, we can uh, go ahead and pop the deck lid up. I'll show you the engine bay here. Um, usually there is a spring-loaded attachment right here that I accidentally broke because uh, it was a really cold day and I decided to work on the engine. I opened it up and the metal froze over and it snapped right off so I gotta hold it up right here actually let me get a stick and then we'll take a look at this alright now that we got our trusty stick let's go ahead and uh, pop this deck in the back open alright so what you have here is this basic 1300cc Volkswagen engine 
Um, these engines are pretty much bulletproof. I mean, this thing will run forever. What you have here is your distributor. It, um, there's four leads here that lead to the, each of the flat four cylinders. You've got a coil, which leads to the distributor. You've got your fuel filter here. You got a fuel pump, your carburetor. Uh, interesting design. You got an oil bath air filter. So it's kind of like a bond system where the air, the air enters into the, the filter there and um, goes to the oil and traps impurities basically. It's not like uh, today's modern cars. I think the modern Volkswagen uh, has a paper filter inside its air filter. You got this pulley here. And because they're trying to keep things compact because it's in the back of the car, the engine, the pulley spins the generator here. It's a generator, not an alternator, because it's running, it's still running on a six volt system. And this generator is connected to the fan, it's connected to the shroud in the back. And depending on how fast you're idling the engine, uh, you can help with both the cooling and the electrical uh, system recharging the batteries. Uh, trying to get that right is pretty tricky on these cars, uh, especially since there's no attack on here. Uh, but in order to do it, you have this idle adjusting screw on the car, which controls the amount of air that's entering the car. And then you got this volume control screw on the side, which controls the amount of gas. And once you get that right, it's pretty much things like a swan. So on the other side, you got this uh, oil cap right here. And if you put the oil down here, it goes down here. It's a dry sump system, and it goes down. Uh, the thing gets splashed around in there. Uh, so you just open it like that, stick some oil in there. You either get these things or you don't. Um, got this uh, oil dipstick right here. You can check the condition of your oil, see how bad it's and how long it's been since uh, <laughs> you've changed the oil. Oops. <laughs> German cars leak oil. Anyways, let's uh, take a look inside the car. <clears throat> All right, so inside, um, it's pretty Spartan. Uh, you get your steering wheel here. You got a uh, your horn, your speedometer. Um, there's red lines on the speedometer because there's no tachometer on this. So you try to shift before you hit the red lines. Um, you can't really tell how how um, how much you're revving the engine, but just try to <laughs> you just try to hear it and then shift before it hits that red line. Uh, you got your fuel gauge here. Um, there's a float in the fuel gauge, and depending on how the car is. <laughs> you could be going up a hill and the fuel gauge will go down, you go up down a hill and it's going up. It's uh but it's still pretty reliable, I'd say. You can tell if you're empty, you'll know. You got your AM radio here. You got little dials here to turn them on and off and move the frequency. Uh, you also have your headlights you got. So you pull it out once, that's low beam, you pull it out twice, that's high beam. You got your windshield wiper and windshield washer button here. Just pull that out and uh, like this. You got the windshield wiping going if it's raining. You got, you got an ashtray. Uh, used to smoke a lot in the 60s, I heard. I don't know. I wasn't born. If I had to compare the maneuverability or the interior space in here, I'd say it's a little bigger than the modern Fiat 500s. Um, there is a lot of legroom. It's uh, very German in here. <laughs> Feels very German. Uh, you got your shifter right here. It's a pretty good gearbox. Uh, there's no synchro mesh in the gearbox, so it kind of you kind of grind gears a lot in this car, uh, but it still works. It's never let me down. Got your parking brake right here. You got clutch, brake, and your uh, gas on the right. And you got this little beetle box here. It's a little uh, dash compartment. You can keep your tools, spark plugs, whatever. It's kind of, it's really kind of small. I keep this uh, little lucky charm I have here. Uh, ever since I put this in here, I've made it home every time in this car. These uh, markers, they're uh, purple markers. Got them from a friend and she uh, gave them to me. Uh, because I used to use them to take notations when I was on the chess team back in the day. and. I'd win most of my games using them, so I figured I might as well use them as Lucky Charm. And ever since I did that, I've made it home every time in this car.
figure that out. Anyways, let me uh, get a, a hat and a jacket on and we'll take this thing out for a ride. Alright, so the startup procedure on a car like this is a little different. You gotta pump the gas a couple times. I usually give it about three pumps. Make sure it's a neutral. I keep the parking brake on. And let's see how she starts. These cars are a little cold blooded. It takes me about 10 minutes to really warm her up. Ciao, Selfie. Let's get to 10 minutes later. What's really astonishing about this 1300cc engine is that it only has a 40 horsepower motor. It can go from not to 60 in about 3 to 500 years. And with its top speed peaking at 65 miles per hour. And, but despite these downfalls, it's still fuel efficient, even by today's standards. You never have to worry about the speed limit ever again. Well, if you're bored with uh, creeping uh, your friends on Facebook or you're bored looking for a mail order ride, you can always go on samba.com. It's a good website. It has all the uh, random Volkswagen facts, all the Volkswagen parts you'd ever need to find. The parts are readily available. They made so many of these cars. It's funny, this design is. I don't know, from the 1930s, the late 30s, and people still stop and stare at this thing. You know, it's a beautiful car inside and out, but this is one of those times where Volkswagen got the design right the first time. I mean, look how much headroom we got here. The ride is alright, you know. You see the holes coming. <laughs> hey, there's another beetle right there. Modern one. Kind of a chick car. Now most car, modern car enthusiasts would say there are many problems with this car. Including the noise. As you can see, you can't even hear me talking to you. Alright, see you guys next time.